You just recently had a run with Fox Sports. Yeah. And so let's flip it on you. What would you be asking yourself if you were standing here now that you have, you know, you dipped your toes a little bit into the media world? Probably a bunch of stupid ass questions about Brooklyn. <laughs> but I understand why you guys asked, so I'll let whoever wants to ask the first question about Brooklyn so we can get it out of the way now. Go ahead. Do you plan to take legal action against Connor and is that moving forward? I have no comment on that. Okay. But he fucked me out of a title shot, I'll tell you that much. It seems like Connor is, uh, there are reports that he's been reaching out to some people who are on the bus and apologizing. I think Rose Namun said that, uh, Carolina uh, Culver-Cabre said that. Has he reached out to you at all? No, he, I haven't heard from him, so fuck him. And. If he had, would you be open to that conversation or, or no? I don't really got a lot to say to the guy. I mean, I lost a title shot. You know what I mean? I, I have proof. I was the highest ranked guy on the card. I would have stepped in to fight Khabib at the drop of a dime. Um, I've always loved the fight with Khabib. Bless his heart, he's a cool ass guy. But, you know, this is a sport and I've always liked the way I match up against him and I got fucked out of that opportunity. Um, so I don't really have too many kind things to say to the guy, but you know, you work your whole life for those kinds of opportunities. Do I want mine on short order? No, I'd love a training camp, but I mean, like I said, if they walk in the door now and said, hey, you wanna fight for the title in the next 10 minutes? I'm out the door, I'm warming up, I'm ready to go, you know? So to lose that opportunity, man, and uh, that's tough. You know how this sport works, guys. Like the opportunities like that don't come along. I could string together 15 wins in a row and still not get a title shot. And I lost my opportunity, my dream. Um, and I hope that, you know, I'm going to fight my ass off to earn it back starting on July 7th with Anthony Pettis. But, um, yeah, tough, tough pill to swallow. Do you think there should be some further disciplinary action against him for, for that? I don't know, man. It's out of my hands. I, I just try not to think about it too much. Whatever, however, however and whoever wants to handle that, that, that that's on them. But, you know, I'm – more than ever, I'm focused on, on this task at hand. I'm, I really want to close this chapter with Anthony, um, you know, being matched up to fight again. Uh, you know, it's a good fight for me. It's a good fight for him. I want to close that chapter, so I'm not really thinking about, you know, who should do what to Connor, whether it be the state of New York, the UFC, athletic commissions, whatever. You know what I mean? I'm just not thinking about that. I'm focusing on myself. I don't want to waste energy on that. I've wasted enough, you know. Brooklyn was a fucking heartbreaker. Uh, to say the least. And this is the most I've said about it. You know what I mean? I've tried to stay pretty close off, but just fuck it. You know what I mean? You guys want some answers. That's, that's, you got some. Did that whole experience sort of sour you a little bit towards fighting? The whole Brooke thing and, and how that whole just fiasco happened? Did, I mean, is the love still as strong? Or, you, I mean, it brought a lot more emotions towards you, I'm sure, because of the whole thing. Not one person can ruin my love for mixed martial arts. You know what I mean? You know, that, that'll never die. I, I've, I love, I've loved combat sports my whole life, starting with wrestling, you know what I mean? And, and uh, you know, that goes all the way back to when I was 11 years old. And, and my love for, for mixed martial arts will never waver. My love for the UFC will never waver. Um, just because some guy played up some theatrics, WWE style, and uh, took it a bit overboard and uh, affected the lives of fighters and workers with the UFC. I'm not gonna let one person's actions directly affect how much I love this sport. You know what I mean? I, if I, the day I fall out of love with it, I'm hanging them up. You know what I mean? It's not worth it. If you're gonna get punched in the face, elbowed, cut up, busted up, injured, have to cut weight, have to bring yourself to the brink of death to show up the next day and try to put on the performance of your life, you've gotta love it. And if I don't love it, then it's just not worth it for me. You know what I mean? And that, that love will never die. So I, I, I'm not gonna let one guy spoil the party. All that stuff in the back of your head, though, about missing out on the title shot, everything that happened in Brooklyn, was it hard to jump back into another camp for Pettis? No, it wasn't hard to jump back. I've been – it wasn't hard at all, and it's because of this place. You know what I mean? This is the first – I've dabbled with training in Las Vegas for a few fights. I did for the Jim Miller fight. I did for the Trinaldo fight. Came out here for like a month, four weeks to work with John Wood. But I got to do eight full weeks here at the PI. You know what I mean? And I'm really excited to showcase – like I always say, like I like to bring, I talk about myself as a product, you know what I mean? People buy pay-per-views, people tune into fights. I bring a product into the octagon with me, you know what I mean? And this is the best, most polished, state-of-the-art product I've ever brought into the octagon. So it didn't spoil it at all. It made me actually more excited than ever. I wanted the fast turnaround. You know, I told him like, fuck this, I want to fight, you know what I mean? So, you know, within days, 
you know, I'm talking to Sean Shelby and we're, we're sealing the deal and, and here I am now. Brooklyn was a huge card. It had a lot of, I really wanted to fight for, for some family type reasons. My dad was born in Brooklyn and as we all know, my dad's not here today, may he rest in peace. But I really wanted to fight in Brooklyn. That's where a lot of my family's from. I had a lot of family come out for that. But you know what, here I am, International Fight Week, on the main billing, on a pay-per-view, getting to fight with my 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 Francis Ngano teammate, you know what I mean? We're like lethal weapon out there. So it's like I'm excited. <laughs> yeah, I know, right? <laughs> so I'm excited, dude. You know, I'm not gonna let all this stuff behind me weigh on me in a negative way. It just doesn't matter right now. So, so was the performance institute what kind of cemented that you were gonna keep coming back here for training? Oh yeah, absolutely. I, I love working with the staff. I'm building good relationships and you know, this is such a a valuable asset to our careers, you know what I mean? And a lot of guys aren't taking advantage of it. I understand some guys can't come out here for a full training camp and can only come a little bit here and there, but I really encourage people like, dude, come out here and experience this. Come out here and really like to find out your deficits, you know what I mean, physically as an athlete, you know what I mean? We all know our deficits as mixed martial artists, you know what I mean? Okay, my takedown defense is so good, I need to work on that, this and that, but we, we're not we're not masters in in this in building athletes. So it's cool to come here and be like, hey, here's your deficits, here's your strengths. Let's work on you as an athlete. So it's a really cool thing to integrate into your MMA training, and I think that guys should really take advantage of it. If you gave it a percentage of the better fighter you're going to be coming in against Pettis with this extra time, what would you give? A hundred percent, a hundred percent, one hundred and ten percent. I mean, it's I already made a lot of improvements before. And it's not like I went, you know, my team back home is great. I got a good team behind me. Rick Little is my head coach, my, my strength coach, CJ Taylor back home. I got a good team back home, you know what I mean? But I got to come back here and keep building, you know what I mean? Keep building with with an Olympic level staff, you know what I mean? And, and I've made huge improvements still compared to Brooklyn, you know what I mean? The, Take it at this. Last camp was like the butt sniffing stage. Let's figure, let's kind of figure this guy out, you know, and at this camp, like they know me. They've sniffed my butt. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Just kidding. <laughs> just kidding. But no, but really, last camp, they're just getting to know me. You know what I mean? And now it's like they know me. They know what, what they're working with. So now this camp, way more improvements. You know what I mean? So it's just been awesome. So would you say, like, the first round of preparing for Pettis, you're working on the big things, and this one maybe fine-tuning the, the minutia a little bit? Kind of everything, the big stuff and the small stuff, the little details and the big picture, you know what I mean? Whereas last camp, it's like, you know, these guys, it takes more than eight weeks for, you know, it takes more than eight weeks to figure somebody out, you know what I mean? You, you, you kind of, you get run through the test, you kind of, they kind of feel you out, you know what I mean? So it's like this camp, it's like we've, we've kind of figured that all, all that out and now we're just like building on that and it, it's been very productive, it's been very good. Will that transfer over to the weight cutting as well? Because now you have these guys, a lot of expertise in that field, and now you've done a couple camps here. You're yeah. More full time here. So can you tell us right now you feel better with, you know, what, what are we, like eight, nine days out? Yeah. As opposed to other fighters? Oh, I feel awesome. Clint Waterberg's awesome. He does a freaking phenomenal job of, like, figuring out how to fuel us, things of that sort. I do work with George Lockhart when I'm geared towards the weight cut. Um, you know, but the good thing is, is last camp I started really high. Obviously, I was, I was, I'm a big lightweight. I started very high last camp. And, you know, it's documented that I was all the way down to, like, I think the, the day before media day, I think I hit, like, 162 on a run. Uh, the day of media day, I was 165. You know, so I was already low. But this camp, it's like, you know, we got to start at a smaller number. And, uh, you know, that's, been, that's made things a lot easier. You know, last camp, they kind of had to, like, kind of gear some things down towards – hey, Mike's got to make weight in a few weeks, kind of change some things. Whereas now it's like we've kind of just got to put the foot to the floor and uh, just really focus on everything. And then the weight cut just comes at the, at a, in a timely manner. So, yeah, I feel good. What do you like about Vegas outside of MMA, outside of the OCPI and the gyms? Is there anything that you've enjoyed just living here? Um, honestly... It's uh, not really. I love <laughs> No, and it's nothing against the city. I love Las Vegas. I love that they got like a pro team now. They got the Golden Knights. That's been cool to like, you know, back home where I live in Washington, we don't have a pro sports team in our city. So it's cool to be here. Like, you know, the Golden Knights are up the street. And I've always wanted to have a pro sports team in my backyard. And I'm, ad I'm adapting. I, I do consider Vegas my second home. And it's not that I dislike the place. 
But in a pissing match, I mean Spokane, Washington, that's God's that's good that's God's earth to me, you know what I mean? I love being up in Spokane. I you know, I love living out in the woods, having green trees, four seasons, you know, hundred and fifteen degree heat coupled with my back sweat problem doesn't really really mesh very well. So uh, you know, I, I do enjoy being here, but just in comparison to home, home home is where the heart is. Did you get that shirt in Vegas? I did. That's very Vegas. H and M. Does the frustration of Brooklyn help you bring a little more fuel into next week? Or? No, it doesn't fuel anything no? at all. No, my I don't need any more fuel. I'm <laughs> I'm very fueled to be a world champion. I'm very fueled to win fights. I don't bring like that's like that's kind of like bad energy. Like that would be bad fuel. You know what I mean? If I was a race car, that would just be like cheap unleaded gas. You know what I mean? Like. I like premium fuel. I like high octane. I like E85 ethanol. You know what I mean? I, I don't like to, I don't bring that negative energy with me into my camps and my preparation and my mentality. Like I said, there is one thing that really weighs on me and that's the lost opportunity to fight for the title. But that, but fueling myself on that isn't gonna get me anywhere. You know what I mean? So I'm staying very focused on my goals, on what, on what has driven me to get me this far. I'm not gonna change that because of one guy's actions. I'm keeping my mindset the same. You stated you wanna do a little bit of a catch up because you had some time off. So not to overlook Pettis. Yeah. Because there's been some shifting around of some lightweight fights, <laughs> you come out of this healthy with a win, are you raising your hand and saying, hey, maybe I fit into one of these, you know what the shuffle I'm talking about, what happened with Nebraska and Boise and all that? No. So not filling in for Boise, but yeah. the trickle effect. Um, here's the thing. I got a beautiful girlfriend back home that has, hasn't had me for, by the time this fight rolls around, 16 weeks. She's been without her boyfriend. You know what I mean? I, I can't do that to her. So I, I, I do, my goal was to fight three times this year. I, you gotta, you gotta look at Brooklyn and, and consider it to be a fight. I did an eight week camp. You know, I didn't get to compete, but you know what I mean? I'm not going to try to make up for two more after this because that means she gets to sit at home with Stone Cold Kiesa, my new puppy, and <laughs> we don't get to spend time together and stuff. And, and I, that's not fair to her. And for me, you know, I got to go home. I got to remind myself what I'm fighting for. You know what I mean? And as much as I love training and being here, I enjoy every single day that I'm here in Las Vegas. I love being here. It's uh, there's not a day I wake up where I'm like super homesick and I'm miserable. I'm happy to be here. I'm happy to train. But, you know, I got to go home and spend time with my girlfriend. I need it. We have plans for the summer. I do plan on competing again before the year's up 110%. But I need some time at home. I need some time with her. And, uh, you know, I need some time with my dogs. Thanks, Mike. Yeah, cool. no problem, guys. Thanks, Mike. Thanks, Mike. Yeah, Thanks, Mike. Appreciate it. Yep.